Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. I can't let this slide any longer. It appears many of the big automakers don't want to survive this decade and they're going to get their wish. If you're an investor or employee or supplier to any of these companies, please pay attention. For months, I've been predicting very tough times for legacy automakers, suggesting many won't make it out of the 2020s alive. They have to go all in on EVs now or they're dead. And that was before this unexpected health issue, which looks to be the final nail in the coffin. Ford and GM are both fucked. This is no longer a possibility in my mind, but an inevitability. Truth be told, I feel VW is the only large legacy automaker who both know what needs to be done and is taking the necessary steps. Their CEO, Herbert Deese, gets it. VW is in great hands. In fact, for contrast, let's listen to Deese talking with CNBC recently about the future of the automotive industry. Why? Because he is literally the only legacy auto CEO who is saying anything that makes any sense. Generally, I think uh, 2020 for the automotive industry will be a, a, a very difficult year. We are well prepared so uh, and we are optimistic. Uh, we come with a lot of new products, so we're basically optimistic, but it will be a very uh, demanding year for the industry. Mr. D is a very, very interesting time for the auto industry. If you take a look at Tesla's market value surging past Volkswagen, yeah. I mean, <laughs> How do you explain why investors are putting money yeah. in a company like Tesla, yeah. which is uh, not making money yet, compared to yeah. a company like Volkswagen? Yeah. I mean, Tesla yeah. is burning cash. You're making money. Yeah, you know, uh, the the market devaluation uh, tells you something about the future, no future expectations. And Tesla is having a product which basically describes the future of the auto industry, no? a fully connected uh, electric car. And so into there's a lot of evaluation uh, about the future car and I think Tesla is paving the way there it's it's uh, modeling something new for the industry I think we are close to follow yeah uh, and um, uh, so uh, we are quite optimistic that we still can keep the pace with Tesla and uh, also at some stage probably overtake keep the pace overtake the question will you <laughs> eventually who will win in this uh, you know tech car uh, space will it be you know traditional car makers like yourself like Toyota or Tesla or you know players like Google I think it's an open race I would take Tesla more seriously than Google and um, uh, but and they're also from our our uh, peers uh, some uh, very competitive companies like Toyota uh, but it will be I think uh, the company uh, which uh, adopts fastest and which is most innovative uh, but also which has enough scale in the new world uh, will make the race. What are you doing to win that race? Uh, we are really uh, ramping up our software capabilities, uh, buying companies, uh, building up uh, new skills. Uh, we are heavily investing in EVs, in battery cells. Uh, so I think we're doing the right things to be competitive. The sense out there will be gas powered. That will be the future. I mean, where do you stand on that? No, the, the future will be electric in the in the passenger car world for sure. I think that's pretty clear now. Uh, and uh, this train is moving, uh, it's, it's gaining speed, it's gaining momentum. And for this world, we are preparing. So my view is that the car will be the most precious and, and uh, still prestigious and, and uh, um, uh, innovative internet device. What could hinder the effort? Uh, nothing can hinder the effort. <laughs> The new thing is really to have the car fully integrated in the internet, so loads of data being uploaded from the car uh, to the internet and downloaded, uh, and that makes the car really safe, uh, uh, innovative, convenient, uh, that makes a big change. And that's something new which we have to learn, and that's something probably Tesla is quite advanced already. You know, is the change of, of pace, the change of progress to electric cars, but also to driverless cars, going to be quicker than we think? Yeah. I think, or less quick? I think 2020 will be a breakthrough year for electric cars because also the uh, um, also legislation is demanding basically a, a, a percentage of electric cars in Europe and in China later than in the United States so 2020 21 should be decisive years meanwhile Ford GM and others are either incredibly dumb I mean so absurdly stupid it defies belief or they're smarter than they're letting on and sandbagging their public EV plans to avoid causing ice sales to implode I'm not sure which is which. I can only act on what's being said, planned and done. So I'll take things at face value. I hope I'm wrong. But if I'm not, GM and Ford will be bankrupt or acquired before this decade is out. Or, in the best case scenario, they'll limp into the 2030s, clinging on for dear life. Why? 
The EV transition is happening. I've been over this 50,000 times. We are transitioning to EVs. This is not up for debate. EVs will be approximately 100% of new vehicle sales in the future. Today, they're just a few percent. EVs are an incredibly disruptive technology and this adoption will follow an S-curve, much like cars a century ago, or more recently, color television and the mobile phone. First, battery costs are steadily declining over time. The battery is the most expensive component in an EV. Today, when factoring in total cost of ownership, maintenance, cost per mile, etc., a Model 3 is roughly on par with the Civic or Camry despite a higher sticker price. In a few years, the sticker price will be lower and you'll get more bang for your buck. Second, EVs are not cars. They're computers on wheels. Over-the-air updates can improve performance like range, acceleration and braking and add new features like Tesla's Sentry Mode, Dog Mode, Games, Theatre and more. Owning a dumb car in the second half of this decade will be like carrying a Blackberry in the iPhone era. If you're still not with me, sorry. I feel like it's 1995 and I'm trying to explain how the internet will become ubiquitous. How Ford and GM make money. You'd be forgiven for thinking Ford and GM make money selling cars. This is only half true. They make money selling some cars. Many of their vehicles have meager margins. The real profit centers are pickup trucks. Following those are heavily optioned vehicles and luxury models. But Ford and GM are really finance companies, making mountains of money on vehicle leases and loans. There's two problems here. Being heavily reliant on a single class of vehicle, the pickup truck, for most of your automotive profits is precarious. What if something like Cybertruck comes along and eats your lunch? What if budget-conscious consumers are no longer willing to buy gas-guzzling trucks? But worse still are the automotive loans. This is a whole other video, but in a nutshell, these loans are secured against internal combustion engine vehicles. If the customer fails to pay their loan, at least you can seize their car. There's a problem here. The value of internal combustion engine vehicles is on the edge of a precipice. As EVs reach purchase price parity, ICE vehicles are toast. Why buy a vehicle for the same price that's way more expensive to fuel, way more expensive to maintain because of all the moving parts, has inferior performance, spews CO2 into the atmosphere and can't make fart sounds? This ticking time bomb will probably be the undoing of Ford and GM. Borrowing billions. Last week, Ford drew down $15.4 billion in existing credit facilities to weather this storm. Doesn't sound terrible until you realize that was almost the same as their entire market capitalization. Today, Ford has over $170 billion in total debt. Much of it is secured to ancient technology, which will become close to worthless this decade as EVs take over. This is not good. Further, Ford's debt has just been downgraded to junk by the S&P. This is really not good. For comparison, Tesla has less than a tenth of Ford's debt, yet five times its market capitalization. Even the markets recognize Ford is screwed. It wasn't just Ford who tapped into credit. This week, GM drew down $16 billion to get through this rough patch. GM's total debt is over $100 billion, and much of it, like Ford, is a ticking time bomb. This is really not good. Both companies are in precarious situations with their core technology and products on the way out and no plans to rip off the band-aid and go all in on EVs. Transitioning to EVs will cost both companies tens of billions, but the longer it takes them to go all in, the more costly and painful it will be. This presents a huge problem. The fallout of this health issue means making the transition to EVs, which was already an emergency, may now be impossible to do without going bankrupt. And that brings us to the punchline of this video. Ford and GM's EV plans. Let's read this excerpt from a recent Reuters article which leaked the plans of Ford and GM in the US. General Motors and Ford have widely touted their commitment to emission-free electric cars, but their production plans show a growing reliance on ever-larger gas-powered vehicles. The two biggest US automakers will make more than 5 million SUVs and pickup trucks for 2026, but only 320,000 electric vehicles. <laughs> Are you f***ing serious? A combined total of 320,000 electric vehicles in the US per year in 7 years? Are you kidding me? This is the death knell. This right here, this is it. Game over. Now it is possible that this report is false, but I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. For Ford and GM combined to be aiming to produce less electric vehicles in 2026 than Tesla did seven years earlier is about all you need to know. But if you don't get it, allow me to elaborate. In seven years, Tesla will be producing somewhere on the order of three to six million EVs per year, many of them for the US market. Those numbers are based on 35% and 50% annual growth rates respectively. Use your own numbers if you prefer. The point is, Ford and GM will need to be making millions of EVs combined in 2026 just to keep pace with Tesla just in the US. If their plan truly is to only produce about 5% EVs and the rest internal combustion engine vehicles in the US by 2026, they are dead. 
It sounds like I'm being alarmist. I'm not. I'm being a realist. The writing is so clearly on the wall that I need to put this out there. I'd feel terrible if I didn't. We are seeing two Titanics headed directly towards colossal icebergs. From where I stand, my money is on them both sinking. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. But if Ford and GM either don't get it or do get it but are too short-sighted to shift their business immediately to be all in on EVs, it's game over. Remember, today, Tesla's battery technology is five plus years ahead of everyone. As is their full self-driving data lead, their self-driving chip is years ahead too, and they have more than a decade of experience designing and manufacturing electric vehicles. Tesla's lead, which is already enormous, is accelerating. Ford and GM are years behind, and they're basically planning on doing approximately nothing to change this for seven years. If I'm being honest, I kind of understand. What executive is going to implore their company to immediately begin bleeding billions and undertaking the brutal and painful process of transitioning to EVs? Most of these executives will retire this decade. If their company goes bust after they're gone, why should they care? Better to keep the status quo and enjoy those fat bonuses while they last, right? This health issue has catastrophically complicated things. Before it, Ford and GM needed to go all in on EVs to survive the 2020s. Now, the very thing that they must do may be what brings them undone. Netflix put Blockbuster out of business in a little over a decade. Now we're seeing the same thing underway in the auto industry. EVs are a huge inevitable disruption. Any automaker today who is not preparing to go or already all in on EVs will not make it through the end of this decade in one piece. Mark my words. The question is, after such a significant economic disruption, do any legacy automakers have the vision, leadership, agility and execution to get through this? When the world is back up and running, the dinosaur automakers will be focused desperately on making money in the short term to claw their way out of the holes they're sinking deeper into. This is not going to be helpful for their electric vehicle projects. Currently, Tesla is about the only company outside China who actually makes a profit on electric vehicles. The dinosaurs will be milking their highly profitable pickup trucks, luxury vehicles, and those with lots of options as they lick their wounds, right when they should be abandoning this ancient technology and going all in on EVs. Ford and GM are fucked. What else can I say? I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you agree or disagree? Which automakers will survive the transition to electric vehicles and which will perish? And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. And for anyone who currently works at one of these automakers, your job is at risk. Again, I'm not being an alarmist. You need to face reality. You are working for a company who are steering your ship towards certain catastrophe. What's your plan B, C and D? The same goes for suppliers. And if you're an investor in these companies, well, good for you. I'm not here to give investment advice, just my perspective. And with that said, I'm out. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. This channel has kind of blown up since it launched, and I'm working on making the best possible content for you guys, but it takes time. Consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can continue creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. Either way, the best kind of support is you being here and watching. So thanks again.